Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Again, something a little bit different uh, today. Didn't have anything particularly planned, uh, but this morning I watched a video from your boy Zach. It was his review of Batman Catwoman 1 by Tom King. And in that video, he said something uh, really interesting, uh, which I, I started to, to think about. And just when I got back from the, the gym earlier, because they've opened back up again, thank goodness, even though I can't walk, my legs are dead. Um, I just started to see a few more bits and pieces of news. And then I started to think about other pieces of news. And I just wanted to, to unravel some thoughts with you, if I may. Now then, uh, the video by uh, your boy Zach was called uh, Tom King's Batman Catwoman 1. I finally figured out why SJWs make so many characters gay. Now, in it, it's a, it's a weirdly structured book. Some of it's set in the future. Some of it's set in the present. And I don't know, maybe some of it's in the past. I don't know, something like that. And in the future, there's an older Catwoman. And uh, she's talking to uh, the Joker. And they're talking about her daughter, Helena. And the first thing that she says to the to the Joker is, oh, yes, she's dating a lovely female doctor. <laughs> and it was just like, it was just such a uh, on the nose. Hey, everyone, she's gay type of reference. And what I thought was really interesting by, by your boy, Zach, was he said... I don't think they do it particularly for virtue signaling sake. It's more of a fact that it's it's laziness in trying to get you to like the character. By making a character uh, a minority of some variety, uh, it kind of gives them a, a pass saying, oh, look, you can't criticize this character because they are X, Y, or Z. And I thought that was a, a really uh, interesting and, and, and spot on uh, point of view because you can label that onto to so many different programs that we're seeing today. However, uh, in this video, as you can see from the title, I, I, I believe it goes a step further because you just have to go onto any sort of social media platform you just have to look at any uh, games, website, Kotaku, Polygon, IGN, uh, and they're all activists. You know, the, the, the uh, desire to, to, to truly review something is gone. They always look at it through the lens now of, uh, of an activist. Why hasn't it got this representation? Why hasn't it got that representation? And those people are absolutely virtue signaling. Uh, they are they are putting the feelers out there that my representation makes a better game. Doesn't. 100% doesn't. It's the writing behind it. And when you do these flips, uh, as, as your boy Zach said, it's them trying to uh, make themselves immune to criticism and also not putting the legwork to actually craft a character that's likable based on their own merit now this article that i've just got up at the moment this is uh from bounding into comics today it's uh it's another doctor who rumor whether it's true or not whatever you know we can we can debate till, till it's blue in the face however one thing that we can say for sure is that when uh, they made this iteration of the Doctor when they turned it from male to a female. Uh, they didn't do it for the right reasons. Now, at the time, I was somebody who said, you know, I think we need to shake things up with this series. Let's see how this works. Uh, it could be really good. It could breathe new life uh, into Doctor Who. However, the problem was Jodie Whittaker wasn't willing to do the work and that's pretty evident before she had even made her appearance as the doctor for the very first time 
she was coming out with insane statements saying that the doctor doctor who is always catered to the male gaze which is absurdity sure there have been pretty companions that have been very handsome doctors too uh that's called the medium of television people uh, watch television to be entertained to see beautiful people do amazing things uh it's fantasy but uh, jody whittaker um, again admitted herself that uh she didn't research the role she called david tennant uh i think they had a wee chat and that was pretty much it other than that uh nothing and you could see it in her performance her performance was essentially a a copy of an amalgamation of matt smith and david tennant's doctors there didn't seem to be the originality the spark there uh, whereas if you look at eccleston tennant smith capaldi the differences in the personalities of their doctors is striking uh, eccleston was was mad and stoic at times very rarely uh, allowed himself levity uh, david tennant was cocky and self-assured and flirtatious matt smith was young in face old in soul uh, and then capaldi to me was just in the modern era if anything personified the doctor it was capaldi's doctor uh, he really sort of bridged uh, the gap between new and old who uh, with his take uh, on the doctor a little bit mad at times obviously a little bit uh insensitive clumsy at times in the way that he dealt with people uh it was superb and then Whitaker's just running around like a headless chicken however you criticize a female and you're a misogynist that's the immediate response that you get back because she's become immune to criticism in people's eyes due to the fact that she is a woman and not a man they don't take into consideration the iteration of the doctor they don't take into consideration the uh nature the in which she took the role the way that she butted heads immediately with the doctor who community the way that she came in with the karen attitude of a uh, nice doctor who you've got here don't like it gonna fix it for you which was seen of course in the comic book industry let me grab that one batman catwoman uh as your boy zach said they made their child in the future gay for the sake of being gay no gay because that way they're making the character immune to criticism because if you criticize uh, a gay character you're a bigot you see how this game's starting to work now then i want to go to the last of us part two this is actually from ign southeast asia and the reason i've pulled this one is the title an infected start a look back into the last of us part two hate and backlash and this of course was a really interesting story which i myself was right in the middle of alongside jeremy from geeks and gamers ryan canal uh, Mr. H reviews um, Maddox, Maddox, something like Mannix, something like that. Um, lots of different people who were copyright struck by Sony's Muso Group because, of course, the leaks of the game came out, and the story by the leaks was ridiculous. 25 years deep into an apocalypse and all neil cockman wanted to do was play identity politics uh it was made aware uh, in the dlc in the original game that ellie was gay so they paired her off with a girlfriend in this and then they went and of course uh brought in the trans character who was not abby surprisingly enough and the way that they 
handled both was terrible. The relationship between Ellie and Dina was a joke. There wasn't anything that you could see in their relationship that would bring them together because the game didn't bother to put in the donkey work. It just worked off the assumption, of course, that you knew Ellie was gay. Here's a girlfriend. They're now together. You must like them. No. Adina came across as highly unlikable, uh, moaning, whinging, self-absorbed. When Ellie admitted that she was immune to the virus, uh, it was just brushed off immediately by Dina and she said, oh, well, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Because it was all about her. And then she spent most of the rest of the game just lying on a sofa complaining and whinging. The fact that they jumped from Jacksonville straight to Seattle and they didn't do any relationship building between the two characters that would make us realize why they liked each other when this game was a 25 hour bloated mess that was twice as long as it needed to be they could have cut a lot of the chaff out and focused on this relationship building but they didn't because they'd put the label on the characters and that made them in Cuckman's eyes, immune to criticism. Exactly the same with the trans character. The trans character in the game was bland, boring, robotic, came across as, as Data from Star Trek, and not as good as Data, but I mean, in the way that they kind of tried to talk. It was, even Data was better than that. But their selfishness shone through in that, they put people's lives at stake because they wanted to go back to their community and confront their mother about it. 25 years into an apocalypse, nobody cares about your identity politics. Nobody on the road is asking you your goddamn pronouns. But you can't criticize because the label is there. They're trans, they're immune to criticism. And that shouldn't and isn't the case. But of course, when people like Jeremy, myself, Ryan, others spoke up about it, we get branded istism phobes, Gary from Nerdoronic and many more. We get branded because the ticking of the box has made them immune to that criticism. I'm just going to pull one more example up. This is Battlefield 5. Uh, EA calls the backlash against women in Battlefield 5 uneducated. Uh, Patrick Sodland, uh, when they released the trailer for Battlefield 5, which showed a bionic woman on the front lines in World War II, jumping out of windows, getting shot, standing up, being fine, smacking people over the heads with a cricket bat. It was laughable. And most people like Battlefield because it's more of a, when I say realistic, it's more of a realistic sort of a sim, mass battles going over the top, that sort of business. So this insert here, again, EA thought they were going to make themselves immune to criticism. Hey, look, we're doing something progressive. We brought a female into the game. Whether or not they were trying to appeal to a female audience, they're barking up the wrong tree. Battlefield is probably a 98% male audience. <laughs> probably higher. I'm being generous. As most, most first-person shooters do tend to be vastly, vastly, vastly predominantly male-orientated. Because guess what? Males and females don't like the same things necessarily shock horror but of course when people rightly criticized the uh, virtue signal in that case they get called again sexist and in this case uneducated uneducated and the hilarity of course with battlefield 5 is that they 
rewrote history. They took uh, events which happened in World War II, where immensely brave soldiers gave their lives, and then switched it to have female uh, protagonists. <laughs> but you can't criticize it because it's female. You must immediately accept, unlike as Zach said. Otherwise, you get called uneducated. Now, of course, the backlash with this is the fact that Patrick Soderlund ended up getting fired from EA. Because once he said that, and the backlash that he got for that, the stock price and the pre-orders that were cancelled because of this mess saw the stock price of EA plummet. He cost them tens upon tens of millions of dollars. So he was quietly exited from the company, fired. Last of Us Part 2. Normies bought the game to start with, drops off in week two. Sales now dead. Dead. Because people realized what the game was all about. Batman Catwoman. It's not getting particularly favorable reviews. It's not getting terrible reviews, but it's kind of getting eh reviews, which is a shame because Clayman's art is absolutely phenomenal, if you ask me. And then Doctor Who. We know the story of Doctor Who. The interest was there to see how a female Doctor would perform. And it created some of the highest viewing figures of Doctor Who knew who. And then... By the end of Jodie's second season, which is shorter than all the other Doctor's seasons, posting the lowest ever ratings of New Who. When you insert these characters, when you think that because of their label, whether it be female, gay, trans, whatever it may be, when you think that is enough to be immune to criticism, you're breeding intolerance. You're just breeding intolerance. You're making people go this. And we can see in all of the examples that I've used today, very noticeable drops in the sales. Battlefield Five's dead now as a game. They're not going to do anything more with it. Last of Us 2 is dead. This one is too early to call, but like I said, middling reviews. And Doctor Who is in the dumpster. But it's going to have plenty of people who are going to still say, you can't criticise because of this. But it doesn't matter. Because people have already spoken. They've either spoken with their wallet, or they've spoken in regard to a television show, whether or not they tune in. In you attempting to be woke, in you attempting to be progressive for all the wrong reasons, you are just turning people off and making them intolerant to what you're doing. As well as the fact that you're just using these communities and using them as a shield to hide behind because ultimately, you're a coward. Cowardice. We know Chibnall's a coward because of what they did to the history of Doctor Who. Almost 60 years of it. And we absolutely know Tom King is a total coward. Hiding behind skirts, attacking his own peers, attempting to cancel them. Ballless, spineless, Coward. Sodlan, oh, <laughs> cuckers. Didn't want anyone to criticize his woke masterpiece. S copyright struck his channels, pulled videos down, made people like myself and others go through uh, weeks upon weeks of trying to fight and eventually win against the machine. Another coward. Somebody who said they didn't know anything about it and then admitted later to immediately knowing everything about it and pushing for
for the pull down of anything related to it. Coward. And Sodland, of course, with Battlefield 5. Uneducated. Not just ignorant, but stupid. Calling an audience uneducated for valid criticism while at the same time rewriting your own history, removing the swastika from the game because it was, well, it's too much. A game that actually featured proper Yahtzees. The hilarity of that in itself. <laughs> so if you don't want to breed this sort of intolerance, have some actual respect for the characters that you're trying to create. Have some actual respect for who they are as a character and why they should be liked. Not liked for the sake of their box. Came out a little bit wrong. That it's ticked. But as their character, as their personality, what they do that makes us support them, get behind them, follow them. I ain't even gonna go there with I am not Starfire. You can watch the video I did yesterday about that. But it's still the same principle. So there we go, folks. I know this has gone on a bit, but I just wanted to, to kind of get that off my chest and see what you think. But I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and YouTube for live streaming. Those links are in the description box down below. I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.